I am going to talk about um, uh, really some work that came out of um, the ShareVDE project. And um, it was something that I stepped into um, almost a year ago in January. And I had an opportunity to um, help uh, support uh, some of the uh, ShareVDE work that uh, University of Pennsylvania is involved in. I started a new role um, basically doing metadata research for the libraries and it's it's pretty um, you know um, exciting and uh, fun and challenging and all those great things um, uh, as, a, as a new employee I've gotten to, to work in this very exciting area so about share VDE um, before I jump into some of the data mining and previous work um, basically we um, Share VDE is um, sort of this, this global cooperative, and I and I believe there'll be a lightning talk, so so I won't do too too much intro on it. But they are using um, records like uh, Mark records that are uh, transformed from Mark, and there's an enrichment process, of course, uh, for entities. And um, the Share VDE staff have a process for development of the clusters that I'm going to talk about. But what this presentation is going to do is introduce sort of a complementary approach um, um, that kind of goes along with uh, figuring out the various clusters um, so that you can kind of present a more uh, easier to understand view of sort of bibliographic relationships. And it's, uh, I would say that the bid frame data model, a lot of people here know about it and um, uh, have, have uh, incorporated into their work. But what I like to do when I'm talking about it is just say that our bib frame data model is descendant from an intellectual tradition of cataloging practice. And the LRM conceptual model isn't necessarily new in the sense that these are new ideas. They're really a reconciliation of ideas that have been, um, are very unique uh, to the discipline and are, I believe are sort of foundational elements that are um, really too important to um, disregard or get rid of. And, and so um, I, I think uh, referencing these is an, is an important way for implementing some of the descriptions we want to do, um, which, which is to make uh, our data more um, easily discoverable. And um, we're doing that in, in the ShareVDE catalog, of course, but what, what we have in the ShareVDE catalog are works and instance descriptions. Um, instances uh, are important because um, they include some format and publisher data and unambiguously identifying an instance relies in part on having uh, publisher data in a bibliographic description and these, um, this data and records um, is sometimes uh, uh, the data, uh, the data quality varies. So um, it's mostly the publishers have been entered as strings and they're not necessarily controlled identifiers yet or um, they haven't really transitioned to entity-based cataloging or they're just in the process of transitioning from uh, publisher strings into entity-based cataloging. We're, we're getting there now, but um, for most of our history of cataloging, we, we really haven't been there. And there's been uh, some previous work, I just wanted to uh, tip my hat to this work that came out of OCLC research. I know that this uh, research in terms of like, if you looked at computer science or something else, it might be considered old research, but uh, for library science, uh, we don't really disregard um, that something that's a decade old because it's actually, um, uh, still foundational and their publisher name authority file was uh, an experiment and they provided really um, an interesting algorithm that is kind of what a lot of people use which is this algorithm here which is uh, for identifying uh, publishers you can first what they did was select sets by a language code in the record and then filter sets on an ISBN prefix um, then they use that to identify a publisher name. And this was sort of a, a large scale uh, dating, data mining project. Um, and their findings were, were really interesting. So I wanted to replicate them with uh, some of the data for, that Penn was sending to ShareVDE. And what I sent was, uh, what, what was sent to ShareVDE was about, um, we're, sending it, we're sending about 5 million records. Um, with more coming, um, and I used um, 
OpenRefine to do a finger printing uh, key collision method in terms of clustering publisher strings. And I, after that, I did reconciliation for um, VIF entity IDs. And VIF entity IDs um, are a way to um, kind of more unambiguously identify publishers. And what I was able, I got about 30% in a semi-automated fashion. And um, these are some of the findings of sort of replicating that previous study. So for semi-automation, um, it's possible to reconcile these VIF entities with some 30% of um, what's a, a, what is a publisher string. So that's 30% of these strings that have now been semi-automated, um, a semi-automated reconciliation into entities um, that are much more controlled than uh, string-based. And then because they're entities, um, we reference them on graphs then unambiguously. And then I have some stats in here for what um, both highlights sort of an opportunity and a concern, which is that um, you know to completely automate this, uh, you only get so far with only automating reconciliation. And then when I analyzed um, a good chunk of our mark records with 5 million of the records that are in our bibliographic system, only, uh, I would say we had about a 60-40 in terms of 40% uh, of them have ISBN in the records. 60% do not have ISBN. And um, I mean, this is sort of a, an interesting takeaway is that 10% of publisher entities with no ISBN were matched in a semi-automated process or, or almost 10%. So um, if we have a null ISBN, this reconciliation process can grab about 10% of those, which you know, for, for data mining as a start. So um, the next step, which is what I, um, kind of the remainder of this talk is really, how could I use uh, data mining and machine learning to help with this publisher entification when you don't have an ISBN or the ISBN uh, may be a null. Um, so, and, and really the, the point of doing that is to, you know, we want to thoroughly reconcile publishers and then by doing so, uh, unambiguously find bib frame instances and then we'll be able to have this authoritative canonical bib frame instance in which to cluster our in instance entity descriptions and i did this using um also a somewhat older technique in data mining called uh, fp growth um, there is a professor of computer science at the university of illinois who um, in 2000 published a paper on these rules and and what he did was really um, make the process much more streamlined to find um, uh, like sets that go together. Previously, um, there were much slower methods like a priori um, uh, methods for this data mining. And essentially this is, we develop rules as sort of a, finding out which sets might come after others or what items in a set might come after others, even when there's no like direct relation. And uh, well, I referenced Kaggle here because Kaggle had some great market basket um, analyses. Um, and this is, you can, you can find some interesting examples on market basket analyses. Like if someone buys um, bread and diapers, it's likely that they'll also buy beer. <laughs> And there's some there's some other interesting grocery examples, grocery store examples like that, um, that might help in you know in commerce per se. I, I don't think that ever led to shelves being rearranged to say having um, beer next to diapers, but um, it wasn't it wasn't interesting to me as you know uh, doing data mining. You do want to find like interesting um, interesting sets, so. I have this slide here about metrics that are common to um, the FP growth model. Um, these models are really in place to help us understand like the strength of the association between what um, what comes before and what comes after, so antecedent and consequent. Um, these are some baselines for support. I used a couple different programming techniques. This is actually the setting from a Scala-based technique, but um, it's the same algorithm, whether it's coded in Scala or Python. Um, I did have um, more success um, with sets in using multi-core um, multi uh, Python. And my initial findings um, in this project were 
around rural generations um, for these sets, um, which are, you know, somewhat, some sets were expected. Um, uh, so publisher, VFID to ISBN, you can find some interesting support there. And um, these are some of the, this is uh, how, how I loaded the data set. But another one that was a little more interesting was a main entry, which is, um, uh, main main personal entry of uh, you know uh, a person's uh, contribution to to uh, uh, work this uh, description, and then um, that was um, related to we could find a publisher um, VFID that was related to that, and um, with these initial findings, I have some other sets that I'm considering, and these are I think what's required uh, moving forward now is um, really to get to um, scale here is to introduce larger sets of data because I'm only using 5 million sets. I augmented those 5 million sets with a public data set from, um, uh, where is it from? A public data set from the Library of Congress. And uh, um, uh, that brought it up to, I think about 10 million records, but um, there's certainly a larger uh, corpus that could be combined. Um, other things I'm looking at are um, this 650 is like a subject added entry in addition to the the main entry. Um, you can use entities um, for for these, but this is like after the um, reconciliation process, you would have these entities. Most records that you might find available, um, unless they unless they've come from say. Um, uh, native RDF cataloging, they may not have um, and you know the entities yet. So some reconciliation process um, go, goes into into this initially. And um, so I just kind of uh, summarize what what we're doing and where we'd like to get to. Um, ShareVDE, of course, is you know this really exciting project where there, there's going to be this linked data catalog, and I think it's really. Um, the way that you're going to search and find um, works and agents um, and also the instances related to those both are, are, are really exciting. And so um, their process though, there's some curation by hand as I understand it. Um, so they can, they can definitely get to the instance clustering. That's not an issue. Um, what I'm saying, you know, kind of in this talk, um, by using this association rule approach of pattern finding, um, this FP growth research offers kind of a supplement in terms of like um, the need for extensive hand curation of, of finding publishers. Um, and so that is, um, I, here's the, um, I you commend these articles to you, especially the, um, the OCLC research was quite interesting to read and um, valuable um, as as we move into linked data, I find that um, you know having something like this um, publisher authority file is very useful. Um, this notebook was very instructive in terms of understanding metrics and just some background on frequent pattern minding. And then um, I'd be happy to answer questions um, at this time. Thank you, Jim. Um, we have a uh, a couple of questions and comments. First of all, uh, there was a question on whether the uh, titles from before 1968 were, were they excluded from the ISBN analysis? Um, no, uh, that's a, I mean, that's a good point. I, I take by your point that um, older um, ISBNs of like older issues won't, older um, titles won't um, have them. And um, no effort was made to, um, not you know we didn't uh, intentionally um, exclude those so um, the five the five million data set was just like an initial poll that we were sending to share VDE so they were they represented kind of all titles that we wanted to get into the catalog yeah yeah so they were both old and new records there and the older ones probably didn't have ISBNs because those didn't exist okay that's a good point yeah yeah. Okay. Then there was a comment that uh, in many bibliographic databases, the, the ISBNs and also ISSNs are, are often wrong that, because you can, 
uh, you can check this, but there is a checksum in the number, and you can you can sort of uh, find out if it's if it's uh, if there is a mistake, and and that the, these errors happen. Yeah, I think that I mean, I think what that underscores to me too is the need to have um, some alternative ways to um, do this publisher mining. Mining. Sorry, I keep saying mining. Publisher mining. Uh, so yeah, we definitely need to. Um, have have alternatives to ISBN, and it's a you know it's a starting point. But um, I think if you can to make your starting points like a little more successful, I believe like some um, like the fingerprinting, uh, like the clustering around uh, those strings, uh, and the reconciliation, uh, you'll probably get a little better mileage out of your data if you can do a little bit of. Uh, well, depending on what the what the problem areas are, uh, do some clustering around um, strings of text um, so that you can find more, um, you know, authoritatively identify what those strings should be, and then also do some uh, reconciliation with that. I think you'll get um, a better end result. And um, yeah, that's been that was my experience. So in that regard, I feel the OCLC paper is still helpful because they, um, even though it wasn't like the main intellectual contribution of their work, um, I find that the process of their data cleaning was an important step towards, um, you know, finding these interesting patterns. Right. Then the, there's a question, if, if the, is the source code available to reproduce with your own data? Yeah. Um, so let's see what I'll do. Um, I can uh, make a link available. Um, I have it. The I, I have it in a, a Python notebook, and I'll and I'll put it up on Kaggle so um, everyone can see it. And um, I I'll just find a good way to get, to get it to everyone. Maybe I'll uh, link it in the chat because um, we have the uh, the town hall chat. I'll I'll link it there. So maybe it'll be there by uh, the next hour or two. So, right. Um, yeah. Okay. And and happy to have like, I'm oh, sorry. Um. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah. I actually I have a. Um, I was going to ask you a question. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> of my own. Uh. But um. Yeah. I was thinking if if it would be useful, for example, in a project like Share VDE, which involves uh, a lot of institutions submitting their data, would it uh, help to sort of um look at also the records of, of other institutions uh, for, uh, for sort of matching records perhaps for the same uh, for, for the same work or for the same uh, whatever book <laughs> instance yeah. and, and, uh, and, and see if, if, if you get better information that way if your own records are incomplete but you might find better somewhere else. Yeah, and, and just, yeah, probably to clarify, this project was kind of pen-based, but ShareVDE, to a certain extent, um, their technicians uh, are able to, to do that. So um, uh, I think that, um, I think it'll be interesting to, to hear from um, the Share, ShareVDE experts on that as well. But yeah, I mean, as a, as a research project, I think I could probably do that too. Okay. But the technicians can definitely see that. Yeah, yeah, they have much more data to play with. Yeah, but they okay. have also a lot more to support, so it's uh, yeah. it's a tricky <laughs> it's a tricky balance. And I'm very appreciative of their work. Okay, thank you so much, Jim. Um,